For my term project, I implemented the game of Minesweeper as well as AIs to solve the board. When we first run the project, we are prompted for our name, which we shall say is Bob, and there are three different levels. For our purposes, we shall use the intermediate level. And at the beginning of each game, a help screen is displayed that contains the history of Minesweeper as well as an overview of the game, such as the controls and the different levels of AIs. And when we start the game, we'll notice that it looks exactly like a Minesweeper and it plays the exact same way. There are still mines, there is a recursive flood, flood fill that reveals as much of the board as possible, and we can still place and remove mines. However, an interesting tidbit that I added is the AIs. There are three levels of AIs. The first one is attempting to simulate a human who has never seen Minesweeper before and is simply just guessing everywhere and has no idea what it's doing. This one is doing exactly what it's supposed to do as a human that has never played AI. Just randomly guess and die. You cannot win by randomly guessing because in my version of the game you have to flag the mines. Now, the decent Minesweeper player plays at a almost human pace, it's a bit faster, but what it's doing is what a human would do. It guesses until it can start doing calculations. So it guessed until 5% of the board was cleared, and then from there, it started doing calculations. For example, since there's a 1 here and only one empty cell, this must be a flag, and it does this type of process throughout the game. Finally, there's the godly AI. Now this one is not meant to simulate a human. This one was meant to say, how fast can we solve this? With, being some, with some level of efficiency, of course. So what we're doing is we're doing the exact same thing as we're following the exact same logic as the human player in a decent one, but we're doing it faster, and we never die in the guessing phase because we're backtracking. So if, in, if we guess on a mine, we say, whoops, can't do that one, and we backtrack and go back to the state where we didn't have that mine. Finally, another interesting thing I learned personally while coding this is you can't die in the first move. So if I click this and there was a mine there, it moves the mine to the top, and then, and then recalculates the board and displays the value. And if that top board, that that top corner is filled, then it goes rec recursively moves to the right, to the right, to the right, etc. And so, of course, like any other game, click the smiley face to restart. There's a scoreboard and there's a timer. While we look through parts of the code, let's let the godly AI solve an, ex an, ex an ex expert board. Um, so the way the mines are planted throughout the board is by randomly selecting their coordinates and then placing them. Simple as that. However, to calculate the numbers, what we do is we use the Skangrid function. And the Skangrid function arrives at a cell and then uses the check neighbors function, another helper function, to return the number of mines surrounding that are adjacent to that cell. So for example, one there's a one here because there's one there was one mine next to it. So we put a one there. And uh, as you can see uh, the, expert, the expert board was finished pretty quickly by the godly AI. Um, the way the recursive revealing method is worked is used is by if you click on a cell that has no mines near it, the game will recursively reveal as much of the board as possible until it is surrounded by mines. So now there are, there are mines at least around this perimeter that cause there to be numbers. That's what we're looking for. However, another interesting part of the code is the auto player. For the auto player, it's a, it's a four-phase process total. However, each AI uses different processes. The first AI, which is kind of the stupid AI, um, it plays just in the guessing phase. The guessing phase simply randomly chooses where to guess, like, like so, so I died because randomly guessing. However, the other two phases actually use calculations. And the way the calculations work, if I can get, for example, here, phase two. What this does is as it's randomly choosing where to calculate, it lands at this cell and says, oh look, there's one flag, there must, there's one empty cell, so I'll flag that. And then, it'll, and then after that, we can use phase three to remove, for example, now that we know this is a mine, we know this can't be a mine, this can't be a mine, this can't be a mine, because each one of these ones have had their one, sat have had their one mine satisfied. That's what phase three does. And phase four is simply the closer. It, after... <clears throat> 90% of the flat and the mines have been found, phase four goes through and completely finishes off the board because we don't want it to take forever randomly choosing. And that's how this game works. And there's other parts of the code that are used. For example, Python image library is used to convert JPEGs to GIFs for Python, and EasyGUI is used as well for the user interface.